Hello everybody, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we will be going over every logic gate there is. Well, at least the basic ones. Um, we will be going through the logic, the math, the comparison. Not the bitwise, but the buffers, the floor seal, the constant and the read brick. So I have concocted, is that what you, is that what you say? Anyways, I have made the Museum of Gates or the Museum of Logic. I don't know, it's still a work in progress with the name. Anyways, I think we will be starting by <laughs> talking about what a switch is because a standard switch will either give out zero input or one in input. And the button is the same thing. If you hold it in, it gives a one. If you let go, it's a zero. And if you do a quick one, it would be one zero, one zero, one zero. All right, moving on. So here we are at the first uh, place. These are the logic gates. And the first gate we will be looking at is the NOT gate. The NOT gate flips the signal coming in to the opposite signal coming out. So right now the switch is on, which gives a signal in, and then gives a signal out of, well, well no signal. So if we turn the switch off, see the light comes on. So it switches the signal like that. The next one is the AND gate. And the AND gate only outputs true if both inputs are, uh, uh, if both inputs are true. If either one is false, the output is also false. So if we start clicking, see nothing happens, but as soon as we click both, light comes on. All right. Next up is the OR gate. So the OR gate uh, outputs true if at least one input is true. So like here you see the light is on because one light is on. You can also switch the other one on, doesn't matter with this one. At least one needs to be on in order for the signal to go through to the, to the lamp. All right, then is the XOR gate. So the XOR gate uh, outputs true if only one input is true, not both. So over here didn't really matter, but over here it matters. So only one of these are allowed to be true at the time for the signal to go to the lamp. All right. Then there's the in and and the, the N AND gate is the opposite of the AND gate. Um, it outputs false only if both inputs are true. Otherwise it inputs true. So right now both off inputs true, still true. But as, f uh, as soon as we click the other one here, the input uh, doesn't go through anymore. All right. Then we got the N OR gate, which is the opposite of the OR gate. Um, it only outputs true when both inputs are false. Um, so yeah, as you see, as soon as one of the inputs turn on, the signal doesn't get sent anymore. But when both of them are off, the inputs get sent. And then we got our... <laughs> our uh, edge detector now the edge detector is a funny one because when you hit a switch it sends a signal from zero to one so right now it's at one and now it's at zero and while when it goes from one to zero it has a rise of constant because from zero to one it rises and if we turn it off it goes from one to zero then it falls so we have a rising connecting to a light and we got a falling con uh, connected to a light 
So if you see when I start hitting these buttons, it goes quite quick. I'm not sure if you can see it. Uh, no, can I do this maybe? See what I mean? It just gives a quick pulse if it's either falling or if it's rising. All right. Um, then we got the math gates. Now, the math gates, the four first ones here are pretty basic. You got a plus, a minus, a, a multiply and a divide. So the plus takes two inputs, pluses them together and gives the output of whatever number that is. So a one plus a one equals two, you know? The same with the minus, it takes an output and another and minuses it. Same with the multiply, same with the divide. So these ones sh are pretty straightforward. So I don't think we need to go in depth with uh, all of these. Um, but here's our old friend. This is the blend gate. So the blend gate uh, smoothly mixes between two numbers. So you give it a start value and a, a int value and a alpha between zero and a one. And our alpha will be the switch because it inputs one right now and zero right now. And then we have decided to put 20 as input A and 5 as input B. And we have connected it to the brightness. So you see the brightness changes. I'm afraid you guys can't see it because of the lights in the top corner. But as you see now, it just toggles between 5 and 20, so 5 right now, 20, 5, 20, 5, 20. That's, uh, that's how the blend gate works. We've used this a lot. Um, okay, so the modulo gate is a bit more... It was hard for me to find a simple way of showing what it does. Um, I've only used it a couple of times, mainly in the escape room uh, map I made uh, for my buddy to try and solve. Um, but I came to this uh, <laughs> in order for, for the understanding to be clear. So basically, I have this switch outputs zero and then it goes to the modulo so zero this was this one will do one two three and four so we have five from zero till four and what it does is if we uh, oh yeah up here we have some equals these equals will look at if it's a zero if it's a 1 or if it's a 2. And what it does basically is it takes the input and divides it by 3 and outputs the the last. Um, so yeah, if we hit this, the first one will be on. If we hit the next one, number 2 is on. If we hit the third one, number 3 is on. And the fourth one, we're back at 0. And the fifth one, we are at uh, number two. And remember, so this one is just uh, three, and three divided by three is one. That's why it goes like this. So it's good for making something go in circles in a way. Um, yeah. Then there's the mod uh, modulo floor. And it works like the normal one, but it doesn't flip uh, the sign at zero. Uh, the modulo floor will always give us a positive result. 
uh, result, even when the input will be negative, where the uh, regular modulo, uh, if we input a negative number, the remainder can also be negative. So basically, you can use the uh, the modulo uh, gate for basic positive number uh, wrapping. And you can use the modulo floor when negative numbers might happen and you will still uh, want positive consistent loop values. Um, so yeah. Then we get to the comparison gates. I haven't done too much here either because they're also very self-explanatory. But basically the equal will check two inputs and uh, check if they are <laughs> why doesn't it work okay either way the uh, the equal gate will check if the two inputs are the same and if they are they will output uh, true. Um, <laughs> but it doesn't really do that, does it? That's so weird. Anyways, <laughs> then we got the not equal gate checks if two inputs are different. So the up, it will only output true uh, when they are not equal. Then there's the greater than. It uh, will output true if the first value you put into the input A is greater than the value you put into uh, input B. We use this uh, for our advanced elevator tutorial. Um, then there's the greater than gate. So this one will output true if the first input, input A, is greater than the second one. And then we got the less gate, which is basically the same as the greater gate, but with less. So it checks if the first value uh, is less than the second one. And the less than uh, will output true if the first input is less than or equal to the second. Oh yeah, this is the this is the compare less or equal. So, yeah. If the first input is less or equal to the second input, it uh, will send out a true signal. All right. Moving on to the last uh, the last room here. We got the two buffer gates, buffer seconds and buffer ticks. And uh, these ones you can put a second to wait whatever seconds you want. I've set it to one. So when you hit the button, it goes a second and then the light comes on. Um, it's the same with ticks. Uh, ticks are a lot quicker. It's a game tick. Um, so right now it will wait for 50 ticks before sending the signal further. But you see it's still very quick. So you can make this ticks very precise if you want. And use uh, the seconds is uh, more... Yeah. It's more hardcore in some ways. Um, then you got the floor. Is this the floor? Yeah. So the floor will round the decimal number down to the nearest whole number so if you have 3.9 it will become 3 the whatever it sends out and the seal is the same it just does the opposite so if you had it rounds up uh, the decimal numbers up to the nearest whole number so if you have 3.9 uh, one it will become four and then send that out 
then we have the constant yes this you can put whatever you like uh, we've used this in the simple door you could put 90 send it to a bearing and then it will tell the bearing to be uh, 90 degrees it sends a constant value of whatever you choose it doesn't have any inputs or anything so yeah and then lastly we got this uh, road brick grid and what this thing does is you can put this on any uh, physical object uh, or physics object and it gives you a uh, a way to connect it to for example a teleportation device or something like that uh, that so if you want a car to become a entity that can teleport you put this on connect this to the teleporter uh, and yeah now you can teleport your car by a click of a button all right that's it we uh, have gone through all the logic and the math the comparisons and lastly the odd ones out the boys in the special class um so yeah i hope this might have helped you a little bit in understanding the basics of what these types of logic gate does and maybe you have even thought about how you could use it in some of your builds um so yeah the museum of should we call it man museum of logic gates all right thanks for watching like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one peace